Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with candied yams. That's right, and of course by candied yams, I mean candied sweet potatoes. Since believe it or not, you can't actually buy real yams at the grocery store. It's true, people that sell such things figured out a long time ago that if you call orange flesh sweet potatoes yams, they actually sell a lot faster. But anyway, that's not really gonna affect this recipe at all. And I only passed it along in case that know-it-all foodie relative of yours shows up and points at these and says, hey, you know those aren't yams, right? And then you'll be like, yeah, everybody knows that. So anyway, technically incorrect names aside, let's go ahead and get started. And what I have here is about three pounds of sweet potatoes that we're gonna call yams for the rest of the video. And what we'll do before we start peeling and cutting these is get our water ready. And all that means is add a couple quarts of cold fresh water to a pot and stir in two nice rounded tablespoons of salt. And it's in this we're gonna give our sweet potatoes a little pre-cooking before we caramelize them in our glaze. And then what we'll do once that's set is go ahead and peel our yams and then cut them as shown. So let's go ahead and remove that skin as well as trim off those tips. And then because of the tapered shape, I like to cut two pieces off either end, at which point we're gonna cut this lengthwise. But be careful, these things are a little brittle. So start slow with just a little bit of pressure. And once we know we're centered, we can use a rocking motion and a little more pressure. And we will split that in half, of course, keeping our fingers out of the way. And then once that's split, we'll simply cut it across into about, I don't know, one and a half, two inch pieces. And as usual, the exact size you pick is not the big deal. The more important issue is that you try to get them as uniform as possible. And not just for visual appeal, although that's part of it, but the real reason is so they all cook in about the same time. And then what we'll do once our yams are cut is transfer those into our cold water, at which point we can head to the stove, where we will place this over high heat and bring it up to a simmer. And then all we need to do once that starts bubbling is reduce our heat a little bit and simmer these until they're almost but not quite tender, which is gonna take a few minutes, but I can't give you a time because it's gonna depend on how big you cut yours. So just like me, you're gonna have to test with a knife. And for me, these were still a little firm, so I'm gonna let them go. And what we can do so we don't waste time is while we're waiting for our yams, we can go ahead and put together our glaze. So into a large skillet, preferably nonstick, we will add one fairly giant chunk of butter, as well as some brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar, but I'm guessing dark would work as well. And then for a little extra holiday touch, I'm gonna to also add a little bit of maple syrup. And if you're keeping score at home, I like to use grade B. And if I remember, I'll tell you why on the blog post. But anyway, moving on, I'm also gonna add some freshly squeezed lemon juice which is my big twist on this recipe, since usually orange juice is used. Which for me, with all this sugar, not to mention a sweet root vegetable, is just too sweet of a juice. And yes, I can totally see that lemon seed now, that unbelievably I didn't see when I poured in the juice. But it's fine, at least people will know I use freshly squeezed lemon. So just ignore that. In fact, let me distract you by adding some cinnamon, as well as some ground ginger. And then let's finish up with a little bit of cayenne, and a generous pinch of salt, and that is gonna be it for our glaze. What we'll do is bring that to the stove and place it on medium high heat. And we will cook that over medium high, stirring occasionally until everything melts and starts bubbling. And once that happens, we'll cook it for just a couple minutes until it sort of starts to thicken up and those bubbles get a little bigger and everything's starting to look a lot stickier. At which point we can turn off the heat and wait for our yams, which should be just about perfect now. So we'll give those another test with our knife and like I said, what we're shooting for is something that's almost tender, but not quite. Because what's gonna happen is these are gonna finish cooking in the glaze. So once our chunks of yam are about 90% tender, we'll grab our strainer and transfer those into our glaze. And don't worry, it's totally fine if you get a few drops of water in this as you're transferring. That's all part of the show. And then all we need to do once our yams are in the pan is crank our heat up to high and cook these stirring or flipping occasionally until they are cooked through and our glaze is thickened to our liking. Not my liking, your liking. Okay, so not a very complicated procedure. We'll just keep an eye on things, and we'll keep those yams moving around, while at the same time checking for doneness with our poking knife. And while we definitely don't want these so soft they fall apart, we really do want them nice and tender. And mine were getting very close, but I decided they needed a few more seconds. And sure, if you feel like showing off, and you mastered our pan flipping technique, that would work here, but be careful. If you do it wrong, you're gonna have an incredibly terrible mess to clean off your stove, not to mention a few serious burns. So only try that if you've practiced and or you've had a couple glasses of wine. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna simply continue to cook that on high until our yams are tender and our glaze is thickened to our liking. And for me personally, this is about how far I like to go. All right, I definitely want a nice shiny thick glaze, 
but I don't want a super thick, gloppy sort of caramel sauce. So I think that's perfect right there. And other than giving this a little taste, be careful, it's hot. But other than giving this a taste, we are pretty much ready to serve. So we'll go ahead and pull that off the heat and transfer that into a slightly more attractive serving vessel. And once we've done that, of course, we're also going to spoon over any and all extra glaze over the top. And by the way, you didn't hear this from me, but this stuff might actually be better over ice cream than it is over these yams. It's true. I've heard that from people. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and serve that up. And that, my friends, if I do say so myself, looks absolutely gorgeous. And if we served it like this, exactly zero people would complain. But for that little extra special holiday touch, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle over some chopped pistachio. And sure, pecans would be more traditional, but I really enjoy that color contrast between the green and the dark orange. But anyway, that's up to you. You guys are the Uncle Sam's of your candied yams. But I'm going to go pistachio because of that thing I said a few seconds ago. And that's it. Our candied yams are ready to enjoy. And I don't want to pat myself on the back too much here. I mean, that's what the comments are for. But I really do think using lemon juice over the orange juice here makes a huge difference. And generally, I'm not into these sweet holiday side dishes. I mean, if it's top of mini marshmallows, I don't want any. But while relatively sweet, I think this version actually retains a lot of its savoriness. Or at least enough. And like any great holiday side dish, this is amazing hot, incredible warm, and fantastic room temperature. So that should take a little pressure off when you're trying to time this with the rest of the meal. But anyway, that's it. Candied yams. Once a year, we are allowed to eat root vegetables in candied form. And this is that time of year. So I really do hope you give these a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.